Okay, book lovers, we heard you. All of you Better Life fans who have just been waiting and wishing and praying for a video about books, here we go. I have this dream of starting a Petal Like book club where we talk about a bunch of awesome books by Latinx authors and pick one to read for the month and that dream is coming true because here's what we're doing. I have chosen five amazing books for you to start your year with. I've read part of each of these five amazing books by Latinx authors and I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of them. So if you're interested in any one of them, you can check them out and I'm gonna choose one to continue reading through this month. I'll probably read them all, honestly, because they're all so good. Here we go. When the Moon Was Ours by Mexican-American author Anna Marie McLemore. Okay, so this is definitely a very poetic read. Everything is gorgeously described. It flows like water, which is how our main protagonist appears on the scene. This is a very small town. The town members decide to cut down a very old water tower. It splashes everywhere, and out of that comes a young girl like age nine, and they're all like, oh my God, we almost killed a girl. How did we not know she was standing there? And it's like, no, she just appeared out of this water. Our protagonist's name is Miel. She is, like honey, she is adopted by a woman in the community who is a curandera, who is known for healing heartbreak. So I can tell this is a lot about love and discovering your sexuality in your teenage years and expressing it. You are in a very interesting, magical realism, surrealist world where this girl has roses that grow up from a hole in her wrist. I don't know where we're going with this and it's all very accepted. It's all very like, yeah, she's weird. No one's like, get this girl to a lab and get the government on this because this is a strange superpower. It's just, that's the world that we exist in. Mm, to be honest, I did maybe read this after a few glasses of wine, so maybe it's easier to follow than I remember. I still loved it. Actually, this is probably perfect after a few glasses of wine. Ooh, okay, next year in Havana. This novel by Chanel Clayton is a dual timeline romance that begins with one woman's family fleeing Cuba just as Castro is taking power and then her granddaughter returning 50 years later to spread her ashes on the island that she has only heard about in stories from her grandmother and never visited. The descriptions of Cuba then and now are breathtaking. This is the kind of author that you, like, you can smell what they're cooking. You can see the colors of the buildings. I'm not too impressed with her present timeline dialogue, but the past timeline I am here for. It's already sexy. The uh, main character of the past timeline, Elisa, just met this super sexy, clearly gonna be a revolutionary at this party and their exchange is electric. I haven't heard a lot of like families fleeing Cuba that, that came from really drastic wealth and the family that left, they had like sugar cane wealth. So how does this granddaughter sort of reconcile that she came from a lot of privilege and wealth even though they left the island? to coming back and seeing how it is now. That sounds political, but I think it's gonna be mostly romance. I think it's gonna be a lot of while making out, a lot of touching parts. It's also a pick of Reese's Book Club. The last book I read from Reese's Book Club was really good. This one, ah, oh, okay. I liked these two. When I got to Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe, I started reading it and I was like, Yes. It is by the Mexican-American author Benjamin um, Alire Sainis. Hope I'm saying that right. I did not want to put it down. So far, it's written from Aristotle's point of view, and he is a young Mexican-American boy who feels very much an outsider. He's a teenager. So he meets his friend, and his friend's like, hi, I'm Dante. And Aristotle's like, what? And starts laughing. He's like, my name's Aristotle. And they're like, no way, man, what? And then suddenly they're best friends. And you can see Aristotle sort of start to come out of his shell and ask all these questions about his family that he never asked before because he's suddenly much more interested in who he is and where he comes from. It is written from the angsty, observant point of view of a 90s teenager. And I don't know if it's because that's who I am at heart, is like a like angsty, like 90s kid, but it is so good and the dialogue feels so true and it's funny. It feels nostalgic, it, it reminds you of those teenage years where you needed so much purpose but you also didn't have any, it might turn into a romance. The author himself uh, came out as gay very late in his life, like in his late 50s or something, and was certainly grappling with his own sexuality. I don't know if that will come to play in this book, but I have a feeling that it will. It's really beautiful. Also, the audiobook is read by Lin-Manuel Miranda, and if that's not enough of a an endorsement, then I don't, I don't know what to do for you. So. Next up we have Daughters of the Stone. I read the first 50 pages, 
for 60 pages. It is divided into five books, and each book follows one generation of women in the same family. So I read the very first section. I mean, it's intense. It's good, but it's intense. Not but intense, good and intense. It is beautifully written by Afro-Latina author um, Dalma Llanos Figueroa. It follows the lives of five generations of Afro-Puerto Rican women focusing on the legacy passed from one generation to the next. That sounds kind of dry. Like if you were like, this is a movie with Meryl Streep and it follows the five generations before her, I'd be like, that sounds boring. But this is like, this is very gripping. I mean, I sat down to read and I read the first section in like an hour because it moves and you want to know what happens. It follows Fela, an African slave who is brought to Puerto Rico to work in the sugarcane fields. And it follows how she has her daughter, which I'm sure the second section is going to be about. If you like historical drama, and I'm a sucker for historical drama, you're going to want to read this. So if you're like, Claudia, uh, you're telling me to, you know, read apart the slave narrative, it sounds like there's gonna be a lot of violence and sh You would be right, There, there is definitely that. There is also a, you know, pretty graphic sexual assault, so like trigger warning, just so you guys know. Honestly, I feel like reading stories like this that are so true to our history makes me feel like I'm paying homage to like, our Latin American ancestors, and it's really important to read stories like this, but it's also beautiful. There's so many things of like love and friendship and hope. Check out Daughters of the Stone. Last, but certainly not least, We Set the Dark on Fire by, I hope I'm saying this right, Telorque Mejia. And as I read each of these books, I thought I liked the last one the most. You know, like when I read Next Year in Havana, I was like, that's my favorite now. And when I read Daughters of the Stone, I was like, oh, this one's my favorite. And then I read this fantasy, political, dystopian future romance. And I was like, cancel my plans. Cancel everything. When I pick up a like young adult, kind of a young adult novel, I suppose, I just realize how much I freaking love them. And I go back to being 13 and I'm like, nothing else matters in the world but this book. It's like Handmaid's Tale meets Big Love meets Mean Girls on a Latin American island. So the book follows our lead, Daniela, whose parents have given everything they have to give her fake identification papers so that she could enter a very prestigious finishing school for girls with the hope that she could marry into a very powerful family, which is the only option these uh, women really have. And the high class, everyone marries two women. There are the primeras that act as the administrative and logical and sort of business supporting mind of the marriage. And the segundas, the very beautiful child bearers and emotionally supportive part of the marriage. So we have a polygamy pyramid already and clearly a world that doesn't really value women, um, but they have to like fight to get their share of political power. And you know Daniela is gonna some sh up. And I can't wait to see what happens. She's I'm giving you too much of this. <laughs> Plot because I love it so much. It's like me describing a TV show to somebody when they're like, okay, wow, that sounds great. Do we need to talk about this the whole time? It's this woman's first novel. It has a, a sequel. And I love when you finish a book and you're like, oh, it's so good. Oh my God, there's another one. So can't wait to get that one too. That's our books, man. I think you guys know which one I'm gonna take home and read first. No surprise here. We set the dark on fire. If you wanna get it as well, if you wanna get it from the library, off Amazon, download it on Audible. If we wanna do an Instagram Live, like book club chat about it, I would love that. I love talking about books. Let us know, especially in the comments below, if that sounds like a good idea, cause like, we're here for you guys. We could do this next month if you guys like it and talk about the beginnings of five more really cool books that you guys could read. This is so exciting. So read these things, they're so fun. Get off the internet. Well, not really, watch our videos. We need, we need your views, <laughs> but also read these books. Bye, y'all. Follow like.